Good morning everyone, today's a new day and we are on a solar PV installation over in the Oxted area and we've got seven um, roof mounted, flat roof mounted panels and three in roof mounted uh, panels as well, ready to go. So we've had the delivery, stuff is here, ready for installation, we got a load of weighted tiles for the flat roof mount system that we've got to get up on to the roof. Right, so we managed to get all the equipment up. It's hard work, isn't it, Tom? It was. My trusted colleague, Tom. We're here to make a start on this in roof uh, system here. So we've got three panels going up onto this roof, and then we've got seven going up onto the flat roof. So we're just getting our measurements out. Uh, we'll get this set to centre. We'll judge how high we want to actually get it onto this pitch, and then we'll start to make all the fixings, get the surrounds around, flashing kit on. Simple as that. So this is where we are going to install our flat roof mount panels. We've got six going right behind me here, and then one other one sitting just over there. And I mean, the views up here, beautiful, really just right out in the middle of uh, the countryside here in uh, in the Surrey area. So yeah, it's gonna, gonna go, be going nicely over here. Um, and this is where at the back of the building, where we've got our in roof panels just going over to here. So still got a busy time ahead of us. We're just waiting on the solar panels actually to arrive. Um, hopefully they'll turn up soon enough. Um, and then tomorrow we can continue uh, with the installation and just get everything all buttoned up. And, um, and then we can show you the finished article. Morning, morning, day two of this PV installation. Tom, he's our top. PV guy, he's just starting to do the assembly for this flat roof system. Got the marigolds on, ready to go. He's got his wonder grips on, so <laughs> there's nothing slipping out of those hands today. So basically, we've got to set up a lot of framework here that's going to go basically to the entire length of this area here. They'll be spaced out nicely. We have a 10 degree angle for these panels to sit across this roof mounted system, this flat roof mounted system. Um, so as we start assembling it, we'll show you the bits and pieces that we have to consider and you know how we get all this assembled so that it's all perfectly in position perfectly spaced to get as much of the array and yield as much energy as it possibly can from the sun not much sun out this morning though but um hopefully it'll brighten up a little bit for us a bit later on okay so looking at our in roof system and how we're basically assembling this so in some instances, you might find that these uh, back profiles will be as one piece. And if they're in one piece, it really does depend on the size of the panel. Now, the panels being that they're, you know, 400 watts plus now, means that they've got a bigger surface area. So what happens is with this uh, GSE in integration that we've installed, we have to actually put kind of what we call like half profiles in to allow for the size of the panel. So we've got 1135 from one point to the next which is our width which is fine and then we can make an adjustment to how tall that panel is going to be it's about 17 20. so we've got markers indicating on here where your 17 20 will be so you put your first one on make sure you get your overlap to stop any water ingress so you're 17 20 and by the time you get up to the top that would take care of the height of that panel and this is in portrait so once we've uh, First off, we've had to put in this flash in, which has gone all the way across here and overlapped onto the tile. That's gone all the way along. And we've allowed about 250 mil from the end of our profile um, over 
and then we've got these side uh, kind of braces and channels and flashings that will sit um, against this and this one it holds the side profile down on these um, on these uh, panel uh, holders that will sit there and all of our water basically if when it rains will all come down to this point and obviously go here so it doesn't actually go into the roof keeps it all watertight we've got this part here which is basically just clamping down these side flashings so we've put a few of those down here then we've got these self-tapping screws, which have got uh, like a rubber or um, not a rubber, but a foam washer to stop obviously any water ingress getting into there. Do a little pilot hole, screw them through, and then this locks in these here. Also across this corner or this edge, we'll put our end clamps on, which will hold our panel in place. We've got our center panel uh, our center clamps which will hold the center in here and these are on raised bits um and then exactly the same is what we'll do on this right hand side flashing then to finish it off across that top edge we'll put another flexi um flashing kit like this which will overlap the top of that tiles will come above that flashing and then obviously we've that basic layout, when it rains, it goes over, over, down, over, down, over, down, and we are leak free. So one other thing to point out as well, so we've got a rim roof system, and we've only got three panels. And sometimes you think, well, if we've only got three, is that gonna be easier? It's not necessarily the case because you've got less tolerance to deal with, um, particularly on here where we've got uh, the bonnets are concreted in, so these first tiles and bonnets sat here are all not concreted in, but they're mortared in, so they're really hard, you know, well fixed in there. So if you end up getting too close to the edge, you're going to find problems with fixings. So we've had to really make sure that how we've measured this entire roof for this in roof panel that we didn't overstep it because if we'd have been too close to the edge, we'd have, you know, created a, a situation where those bonnets wouldn't have been able to have gone on. So then you've gone from three panels down to two. So we've had to really make sure that we haven't, you know, scuppered the opportunity in order to do that. So, I mean, really what you need to do is make sure that this whole entire area is tile free, get your measurements out and give yourself, you know, plenty of space to kind of work with in order to get all of this flashing kit in, the in-roof system, and then the roofer comes in and he does all of his bits. So he puts his laps in to make sure it's all watertight and doing exactly what it should be and that no water ingress um, ends up taking it taking place inside the building. So Tom's just doing the assembly now, so it's pretty uh, pretty simple. We've got all of these kind of long um, well it's basically our, our, our framework that's going to hold the panels and get all the alignments and all of our right angles etc to square it all off. Um, so we just need to link these panels together, the, um, these bars together with the rubber feet, obviously sitting on the roof to protect the roof surface itself. Um, and we just get a trusty old fix in, just to tie it all in, make sure it doesn't come loose. And then our assembly will then have the brackets that will go on that the panels themselves will sit upon. So we just measure those out to the to the width of the panel um, and put them in their right place. And because of the way all these are set up, they'll give you the correct spacings between panels. And obviously we just measure out quickly from this point here where the panel, the solar panel will sit and it will come up and it will just overhang this top one. So you get the perfect inclination and also the perfect space in with a bit of overhang and obviously supporting and clipping down these actual um, panels to the to the framework, to the assembly. So what we'll do when the panels arrive, we've got these cross members that go across here that help keep everything square and tight. Um, and these, this end, obviously we've got adjustable. So we can move that left and right as we need to. But on this side, depending on how wide we need to be these will sit and slot in to the 
framework and hold that in place. And then once that's all done, we will then put our uh, tiles, weight your tiles across some of this area here in order to hold everything down and stop it from being able to blow away in any uh, high winds or anything like that. Still on day two of the PV installation and we are still waiting for these panels to turn up. Um, they're only coming in from, I don't know, Essex way, so it's not that far. Um, and we've been told they're on their way. They should be here in a minute. So we're about almost a day and a half late for these panels to turn up, but we're raring to go now. We've got everything ready, everything prepped to go. So we just need these panels so we can start mounting them and, um, you know, start getting connections done, finishing off. So. Let's see, hopefully he's going to be here very, very shortly. And the trouble is, when you have to rely on other couriers and logistics, it never comes to plan. Um, very occasionally it does. So, fingers crossed, it's going to be here very shortly. Transporting these things isn't always easy. But as long as you've got some sucker cups, you're all good, all gravy. Tom, I'm gonna need your help, mate, I'm afraid. So here we have it. We've got our three panels in roof, all done. Roof's done a nice job of getting all of the uh, surrounds done and all roof tiled in. So uh, that's part one of it. Part two is obviously our flat roof uh, mounted system up on there as we spoke about a bit earlier. We'll have a quick look at that. Um, but yeah, it's all gone in really nicely. Um, this is really the first phase of the job because they've still got a lot of internals to do. So we've put all of our panels on, all connected electrically, sits into the roof where we've got a, junk, uh, a connection box essentially. And then we've got a steel, wired, a steel wire armored cable that will go down to wherever the inverter and battery um, side will sit. So over to Tom and uh, he's done a lot of the final assembly here um, today just to get this finished off. So do you want to talk us through what you actually ended up having to do, Tom? Yeah, so we did. We just got all the final connections in. Um, we've got on the side here, we've got the bird, bird proof, bird protection. So it stops any pigeons or other birds kind of nesting under there and then creating hot spots with their nests. Um, we've also got, I don't think you can see in between there, this is the ballast. So these are the supporting weight bearing rails and we've got the ballast which you put on there which are basically just heavy patio slabs um just to kind of anchor it down and ensure i mean i don't think it's going to go anywhere anyhow but just to really ensure if there's any strong winds that they it doesn't lift up or go anywhere because we had a bit of a situation i think where it's about getting these spacings right for your back bracket and your front bracket to get these attached um and obviously because they're assembled. So if you get them too far back, you'll end up getting those two in, but you won't get this front section in. So just really get getting everything measured out. Yeah, and we've got our uh, MC4 connectors here. So the really important thing with the MC4 connectors is they're not sat on the floor, because if they sit there, although they're IP rated, so they're weatherproof against rain and splashes, they're not submersible. So if they were to be sat in a puddle of water, that's when it could start to kind of introduce issues. So we've just made sure that every connection is kind of cable tied and raised off the floor. So our original plan was to have six panels in their landscape position across here and then have one portrait over there. But once we'd measured everything out to get our spacing absolutely correct, um, and with this framework actually, it worked out that it would be better to do these two on this side to be in the landscape position as well. Um, obviously we've got this roof light here which is well out of the way and actually when you stand down the bottom and look up you can't even see that these these panels are in at all now you will see that there's a nice big tree in the way over there and the developer has said that they will um, 
take some of that off the top. Obviously, being in the winter, the light and the sun is obviously slightly lower down. Um, and with that um, altered to enable as much sunlight as possible to come over onto this roof, um, the better. But um, overall, I think we've done a splendid job. So that's it for this part of the install, the first part. As I said, downstairs, all of the internals have still got to be done. They've still got to plaster board, insulate and everything else, put all the flooring down, etc. Um, we're in a bit of a uh, decision-making stage as to where the inverter and battery storage system are going to sit. So we've got a 3.68 inverter, so it sits within the G98 application for the DNO, so we can actually do all of our connections and notify after the fact. Anything above 3.68 means that you have to get permission from the DNO before you can um, get everything up and running and live. We've got battery storage as well. Um, we're just going to start off with a 5 kilowatt hour battery, which will be, all of it will be Fox ESS. So it'll be a Fox ESS inverter, Fox ESS battery. This is for a developer as well, so this is just going to get passed on to whoever ends up buying this property. Um, so part two, we'll show you uh, all of our connection points how we're going to test it and um, in fact Tom done a little test today because obviously they're all linked as soon as the sun's on them or any daylight is on these panels it does start to generate I think you got a reading of it earlier didn't you yeah I think they're about 36 volts each and because it's in series that's cumulative so we've got 10 panels in total so we should be getting 360 volts and that's actually exactly what we've got and also it's just a good test to kind of check that we've got the polarity right check the, the, the minus and the positive the correct way around, which it was. If not, it would give you a reading of, well, minus 360. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because that was one point as well, because we've got lots of, uh, well, we've got our three on the in roof, and then we've got our seven up here. So it's about really making sure we configure it in the correct way. But also, you've got to remember <laughs> which ones you've connected um, and what you're trying to determine to go back into the box and then connect it into that inverter. But... The best way to do that is really just to illustrate it all out and then you can't and shouldn't forget um, and have a point of reference for later on. And you'll also, we'll also need that for our schematics when we do our commission inside and get all the documentation ready for the developer to hand over to the homeowner themselves. Um, and it would be good as well because we'll get connected to the Wi-Fi so when the homeowner actually eventually moves in, we'll connect all of that up and then we can monitor the performance of the system. And as well as, you know, if we end up generating more um, then is required for the property and we're fast charging those batteries and um, then we can always add some more modules to them we can actually go up to putting modules in that will go up to about 17 and a half kilowatt hours available so um, you know they might have EV charging points and their hot water we might be able to put a solar PV diverter in to charge the hot water for those peak times as well so that you've got several months of the year where essentially you've got free generation of hot water too so thanks for watching um, if you like this video, press the like button, share it with everyone, put in any comments, any questions as well, and of course, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one.